I can do it better. Front seat, lean in and kiss me. Been driving all night, baby, sit tight. Stones throw from a free load. I don't wanna go so I don't wanna go home. Home where they're telling me about the life I need. I'm scared they'll never see how their words mess with me. I don't belong to anything or anyone, but crazy love keeps coming back to me. They try to scare me into thinking that I'm going insane. But crazy love keeps coming back to me. I knew my whole life that I was gonna do this for the rest of my life. Like it wasn't even a question. Like the second we put out shots, I was like, it's game time. Like this is what is gonna happen, regardless if it like goes smoothly or not. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, ever since I can remember being, having conscious thought, I've been listening to music. And it was kind of always my dad that was playing like old rock and roll and like 70s rock. Mostly stuff like Led Zeppelin and Cream and Jimi Hendrix. And that kind of always had a really big impact on me because I saw how much that my dad was passionate about it. And he was a guitar player too and he loved playing that kind of music. And then. Um, I have actually been playing guitar for longer than I've been playing drums. I've, I uh, got a guitar when I was like, I don't know, three or so. Teen grew up like in hardcore and metal bands and um, that was his like foundation of who he was. And then me out in the middle of the jungle in Indonesia, I literally had two CDs and that was Evanescence and U2 because my dad's a huge U2 fan. I don't belong to anything or anyone but crazy love keeps coming back to me. They try to scare me into thinking that I'm going insane. But crazy love keeps coming back to me. Great take. Let's do that again. Same thing. It'll be coming around. Okay, I need to stop being in the home. In my head. The song's in my head 24 7, no matter what. The whole like music process for us, or the song process, is kind of like it starts as a seed. You know how like a seed grows into like a huge, ginormous tree? I mean, ultimately, our lyrics are based off of our own real life experiences. We want it to be very introspective and like working out stuff that we're both going through and it was kind of like a therapeutic thing. I feel like I just got my heart broken like blah 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 and I'll be like let's write a song about this and so we'll like give us give ourselves two hours and we'll just like write everything like um, we'll have a guitar with us and write the guitar and um, the lyrics and then He'll figure out a drum beat and we, we definitely, it's a very involved process. We both are there with each other, writing everything with, together. Ultimately, as artists, I think Avery and I are trying to just be like good communicators and through our lyrics, try to just communicate feelings to our audience and kind of help people realize that like it's, it's a really kind of universal thing. We aren't gonna write something just because people want to hear it. Like, we're gonna write something that means something to us, that we believe in, and that um, whatever's going on in our lives, like if we get dumped, if something is happening in the world that's super messed up. Our 
first show was at the Whiskey A Go Go. Oh my god. I literally felt like I was having an out of body. Rep, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, what? I thought I was waiting on you. Halfway. Half, you know, the first thing's coming in a little late. Oh. Halfway. Halfway. It's all or nothing. I can't meet you halfway. Head case. Suitcase. Choosing the sound for Fever Joy was probably one of the easiest things we've ever done because it just like made sense like the music that we make now is definitely has like a pop center because we like really like the structure of pop lyrics and the way that it's like messages are so concisely communicated through pop but then also like Ava and I both have like that really aggressive kind of background and we love like rock and roll and all that stuff and it's really that kind of integrity that we want to have in the music too. We wanted Fever Joy to be the perfect blend of pop and rock. Our bio on Instagram is like if Madonna and the Rolling Stones had a baby it would be Fever Joy. Like we're, we're balanced, we're the yin and yang. And that's what Fever Joy is even like when I was thinking about the title like Fever Joy is like you know it's kind of a Fever and joy are two opposing kind of things, good and bad, but you need, like you need both. And like when they're together, that's ultimately, I think, what, what makes meaning. It, it might be cliche, but it's like we don't necessarily do this for money or anything or because we want praise or anything like that. It's more, and I, I've, that's the reason I like being in a band with Avery is because I can tell that we both just love to do this and we would do this if we had to pay for it, if we got no money, like, I would I would be making music and trying to create art no matter what. So I think like in the future, we just want to continue to get better, play bigger shows, have better experiences at our shows with our fans, and m just make more music and just try to keep getting better and growing as artists. I was gonna do music and travel no matter what, hands down. Doesn't matter where I am, like it doesn't matter. Like that's what I'm gonna do, and no one's gonna stop me. Literally, absolutely no one. And like people have tried, like 100%, like they're scared for my future. Like you're gonna like never know what's gonna happen next, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I don't freaking care. Like as long as I'm playing music and traveling and singing to people and creating art, like that's all that matters. Singing about what you're passionate about is what people want to hear. They want to hear what they can relate to kind of thing, so that's Fever Joy.